Hello there. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about the solutions for a particle living in an infinite potential well, which extends from negative to positive L over two. If you like what I'm doing and you'd like to support that, well then Patreon is the best way to do it. So let's begin. Truth be told, I'm going to draw heavily on the results of a previous video. And I strongly suggest that you watch that video first, because in the previous video, I've gone through a lot of the steps in detail and I won't do it in the current video. The previous video was concerned about a particle living in an infinite potential well, which extended from x is equal to zero to x is equal to L. In other words, it was an even potential centered at x is equal to L over two. And the current video is concerned with an even potential centered at x is equal to zero. If you'd like to know more about the significance of having an even potential, then look at my video where I talk about the parity of the Hamiltonian energy operator. So what were the solutions that we derived in the previous video? We saw that the wave functions for a particle living in an infinite potential well, extending from x is equal to zero to L, were given by the square root of two over L outside of n, excuse me, the sine of n pi x over L, where n is an integer known as the principal quantum number. And this is what stipulates the quantization of energy. Now, the present video is concerned with an infinite potential well extending from x is equal to negative L over two to positive L over two, centered at x is equal to zero. The first thing we need to do is solve the time independent Schrodinger equation. I've labored solving this in the past and have a full video series solving it. So if you want, you can pause the video and work out the steps but the general solution to the time independent Schrodinger equation is given by a linear combination of cosines and sines. So it's a cos kx plus b sine kx, where k is the wave number. And we see that I've defined k squared as twice m outside of e minus v over h bar to be squared. So here is the general solution to the time independent Schrodinger equation for an arbitrary particle in an arbitrary system. In order for this to describe the current system, the infinite potential well, we need to apply the boundary conditions. These are the physical limitations on the wave function for our particular system. So what are they? The boundary conditions are actually fairly straightforward to work out because for physical reasons, we know we can't have infinite energy. That's physically meaningless. And this appears to happen when X is greater than L over two or less than negative L over two. And that's because in those regions, the potential energy is infinite. Now that English is mathematically represented by these two expressions here. So we see that the wave function must be zero if X is less than negative L over two or greater than positive L over two. And this gives us our boundary conditions. So the potential energy inside the well is going to be zero. And we plug that into our expression, our expression, excuse me, for the wave number k squared, and we see now that it's twice me over h bar to be squared. Now we apply the boundary conditions, and we basically substitute these into the time independent Schrodinger equations general solution for x. So we plug in when x is equal to negative l over two, and when x is equal to positive l over two. And we know the wave function must be zero at the boundaries, and that's what these say here. Now, what we're going to do is solve the two of these expressions as simultaneous equations. And what this should do is give us an expression for the wave number k. If we add the expressions, what we're gonna get is that twice a outside of the cosine of kl over two is equal to zero. Now, if we don't want the trivial solution, that's where the wave function is zero everywhere, we must set a to be non-zero. And that basically means that the cosine of kl over two must be zero. And we know cosine is zero at n, excuse me, at n pi over two, where n is an odd number. And this basically means that our wave number is given by n pi over l. In this case, n, the principal quantum number, is an odd integer. And we have the first solution to our time independent Schrodinger equation. A outside of the cosine of n pi x over L, where the principal quantum number n is odd. And for that reason, we refer to it as the odd solution to our time independent Schrodinger equation. And now we take 
the subtraction of the simultaneous equations. If we subtract the two simultaneous equations, we get a very similar expression. In this case, twice b outside of the sine of kl over 2 must be 0. And once again, we're going to look at the non-trivial solution such that b is non-zero. Working through the steps, it basically means that kl over 2 must be equal to n pi. And in this case, the wave number, k sub n, is twice n pi over l, where n, the principal quantum number, appears to be able to be any integer extending from 1 to infinity. In other words, it appears that we have two different functional forms of our wave number. And I'm wondering, is there any way to reconcile that? And of course there is. What we are going to do is divide by 2 here, and then we're going to restrict the principal quantum number for these solutions only to even integers. And if you're not sure that this works, simply plug in the values for the principal quantum number and you'll see that you get the same answers. So we match the cosine uh, solutions for the wave number by dividing by two and only using n as an even integer. And hence we have the even solution to the time independent Schrodinger equation for our infinite potential well. Once again, we're calling it even because for these solutions, the principal quantum number must be even. Now, the definitions of n are only a matter for convenience, convenience and we could, we could write it in lots of different ways, and I'm simply doing it this way for convenience. So generally speaking, we can say that k sub n is n pi over l, where n can be any integer, but we know that we're going to get alternate cosine and sine solutions for each alternate n, whether it's odd or even. So we have the general solution to the time-independent Schrodinger equation, for our particle in the infinite potential well, extending from negative to positive L over two. We have a linear combination of cosines and sines. We still haven't worked out the, the actual coefficients or the constants. The cosine solutions are given when the principal quantum number is odd, and the sine solutions is given, or excuse me, are given when the principal quantum number is even. So what's left to do is to calculate the coefficients, the A and the B. And that, of course, involves normalizing the wave function. The thing is, if we actually look carefully, we don't really need to do that. We know that the wave function is alternately either a cosine or a sine, because when, let's say, for example, n is an even number, this will go to 0. And when n is an odd number, this will go to 0. And that basically means that a and b must be equal if the general solution is to remain normalized. And hence, the actual normalization constant is going to be the same as when we had the infinite potential well from, from 0 to L. And that's what I covered in the previous video. And there I showed that the coefficient is root 2 over L. So I'm not going to do it here. So we say that A is equal to B is equal to the square root of 2 over L. And I'm actually I'm going to put the, the number 1 here just to show or to be very clear, because there's actually a pattern when we start talking about different types of, well, of wells. In this case, we're talking of one unit of L. Now, if you really want to know where the normalization criterion came from, you can pause the video here, where I normalize it just for the B squareds. So we have the general solution to our time-independent Schrodinger equation for a particle living in an infinite potential well extending from negative to positive L over two. We have root two over one times L outside of cosine n pi x over L and sine n pi x over L. And I'm being a bit pedantic or fastidious by including the one here and I actually see they have a typo. This all should, also should read one. We know that it's alternately either a cosine or a sine solution because the principal quantum number n is alternately even or odd and will kill the, car the opposite solution. And if we put our wave number into the expression for the energy, we find that the energy for our particle is given by this expression, which is exactly the same expression when the wave function was existing between x is equal to zero and x is equal to L. In other words, the width of the well is the only thing that's important for the energy. And we have the exact same well width, which means we have the exact same energy. If you're interested, this is how we calculate the wave number which once again is going to be the exact same as x is equal to zero to x is equal to L. 
So before I finish, you might be asking, why is it that in this solution we get a linear combination of cosines and sines, where for a physically identical well, going from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to L, we only get the sine solutions? And the answer is, actually, in both cases, really we are getting the same linear combination of cosines and sines. It just happens that when the well has one of the nodes at a zero, then one of the coefficients, in that case a, goes to zero. So technically, the cosine solution is always there, it just happens that the coefficient is zero. So mathematically it exists, though physically it doesn't. So the general solution to your particle living in an infinite potential well will also always be a linear combination of cosines and sines. And based on your boundary conditions, or exactly where your well ends and starts, your coefficients b and a will either be zero or non-zero. So, thanks for watching. I hope that was useful. Please pass it to your friends and consider supporting me on Patreon.